Welcome back to Ask a Pastor. Um, this week, this weekend, we just went through the uh, Easter holiday, and Easter Sunday, and just barely uh, Easter Friday. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with Easter and uh, a lot of beliefs and different belief structures that lead to different theological beliefs. So that's something we should really dive into today. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get you to start with uh, a word of prayer. Sure. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace, and especially as we reflect on uh, what you have done for us, Lord, at the cross. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for um, all that you have done. We pray that as we discuss here now, that uh, it would be clear from your word, uh, that there would be clarity, that your spirit would use what is spoken to uh, strengthen faith and to bring people to faith. Um, Lord, may you be glorified through this discussion, and may your people be edified. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Um, so this discussion about Easter, there's a lot of different beliefs surrounding it. Do you want to talk about some of the the wrong beliefs, or do you want to just dive into the right beliefs and let let the things get sorted out as they go? Right, so as as you're talking about Easter, you mean with, in in general, what what did Jesus do? Uh, Why? Why did he do it? What is the cross about? Like, why did, (laughs) why did he die? Why does it affect me 2,000 years later? Right, what is the death of a Jewish man <laughs> 2,000 years ago? Like, a world away. Executed as a criminal, yeah. What does that have to do with me here now in the 21st century? Right. Well, the answer, everything. Everything. Yeah. And uh, and it's, it's a really relevant question, too. In this season, you get a lot of, yes, you get a lot of different answers about what Jesus did, about what the point of the cross was. And um, wasn't there another way? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't he have done something else? Wasn't it like, <clears throat> what is the, what's the term? Uh, deity, child abuse? or uh, I've heard it. Right, yeah. I can't remember what that was. There's a phrase that people use. There, yeah, the people say it's like, well, if, if God is punishing Jesus uh, on the cross, that's a form of divine child abuse. Uh, divine, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Deity. So, yeah, let's, let, yeah, just to dive into some of these questions, for, in order to understand how, Again, what Jesus dying on the cross 2,000 years ago has to do with us now, we need to understand how God deals with people. And the fundamental point here is that God deals with people through covenants. God deals with people through covenants. Um, And so when God made humanity, uh, God made Adam and Eve, uh, and Adam was our covenant head. Uh, right. so, you, you can, so to understand the concept of covenant headship, you, you think of it as uh, representation, right? So we kind of understand representation, right? So if, you have, uh, if you're a football fan, uh, at the beginning of the game, the team captain uh, represents the team, and he goes out to center field, and they have a coin toss. And you nailed it this time. I know. I always say coin toss. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. That, that's a hard one for me. Um, And what the captain does in that coin toss, coin toss, what the captain does in that coin toss impacts the entire team. Right. Right. If he, if the captain wins the toss, the team wins the toss. Right. The captain loses the toss, the team loses the toss. Uh, So we understand that concept. That's that's representation. And so Adam uh, in the garden is the representative. For all of mankind, right? For for everybody who is in him, um, and as we know, Adam was not a great representative. Uh, Adam fell into sin. We, we know that story in the garden, um, and as a result, all those who were in him now experienced the curse of sin. Right. Right. So there is a, a covenant God made with mankind in the garden, um, and because that covenant was broken. We are now all under the curse of the broken covenant. Um, So just to give a a text here to explain this, uh, we can go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. It says this. uh, It says that sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sinned. Right? Sin came into the world through one man, talking about Adam, uh, and then death through sin, right? Death is the curse that God had right. warned, right? If, if you eat of the tree that I've forbidden you to eat from, you will die. 
Um, yeah, I don't know, that's a common, a Sunday school question. God said they were going to die if they ate from the fruit, but right. the next day they were still alive. Right. So well, it, it's it's way bigger than that individual death. Right. It's, it's, right. Death enters into the human race right. at that point. Uh, we are now all under the curse of death. Um, and here's the uh, here's how we know that you are under the curse of Adam. You're going to die. You will die. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's what it says. Here. Death spread to all men because all sin. Well, Kurt, were you there in the Garden of Eden? I have no memories from the Garden of Eden. Right. So I'm guessing I wasn't there. Right. You didn't You didn't eat from the tree. I didn't, eat from okay. no. I, I didn't either. Um, and yet it says, death spread to all men because all sinned. Right. So in, in what sense, in what way, did you sin? Well, through my federal head. Through your federal head, your representative, your covenant head, through Adam. So here's how scripture presents it, is that we sinned in him. Right? He was our representative. Uh, just like the team captain wins or loses the coin toss. Uh, right. so you, don't have, you don't have the captain getting the heads and then... The, the linebacker or the kicker being a loser or a winner on his own. Different from right. the, the captain. Right. So in this case, God appointed Adam and, you know, people say, well, that's not fair. I didn't eat from the tree. It's like, well, you can go take that up with God. Right. Um, and, and bear but in mind. you would have if you had been there. Right. And, and, and bear in mind as well. It's like it, you now being a already a sinful person, do you, do you like your chances better than Adam with an unfallen nature? No. <laughs> right. In the garden. Um, but, uh, so, so this is how scripture presents it, right? So our covenant head, uh, the covenant head of all humanity, uh, sinned. And then it says, so death spread to all men because all sinned. Uh, we sinned in him, uh, because he is our representative. Uh, you can think of it even, we have, well, in theory, we have a form of representative government. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. So I say, <laughs> um, and so. Functionally, what's supposed to happen is that they are supposed to go there and stand in our place right. on our behalf, you know, representing us. Um, and what they do counts for us in, in a similar way. Um, and so here is the concept of representation. What the covenant head does impacts those who are in that covenant. Right. right? So what Adam did impacts all those who are in him. And well, if you die, <laughs> then you know that you are being impacted by what Adam did. So all mankind is is in Adam. We are in Adam by virtue of our birth. Uh, you know, Adam and Eve sinned and were fallen. And from that point on, they could not reproduce anything other than what they were. Right. Which was so sinful. Sinful people can only create or yeah. reproduce more sinful people. Right. Um, and so then God, you know, the storyline of scripture goes on. God had promised a deliverer, uh, even as he was pronouncing the curse in Genesis, uh, Genesis three fifteen, he says to the serpent that the seed of the woman will crush your head right. and, and you will strike his heel. The first gospel. Yeah. And we call that the, the proto evangelion, the first gospel promise, uh, that God would send a deliverer who would deal with that same serpent, right. uh, with the deceiver. Um, and so the Old Testament is really the unfolding of that promise. Uh, God reveals his intentions through types and shadows. And we see that with uh, Israel, um, where God is teaching his people certain things. Uh, so, for example, we have the Mosaic Law, and we have all of these different sacrifices, uh, and this priesthood, and, you know, this altar where, where you go and have to offer the sacrifice and take the blood into the tabernacle. Um, well, what's all that communicating? What's well, teaching the people something that in order for there to be the forgiveness of sins, there must be blood shed. Right. Um, and, and, and the goat or the cow bull or whatever would be in place of their blood. Yes. So we, we have this, this concept of a vicarious sacrifice, one that, again, is in the place of another. So uh, in, in Leviticus, it outlines for you, uh, if you were living in Israel and you sinned, uh, what you were supposed to do was bring a sin offering, and you would take this animal and bring it to the high priest. You would lay your hand on the head of the animal as the priest cuts his throat. Um, 
and then that animal is offered up to God. And basically what that's communicating is like, this should be me, right? Right. As, as this animal is dying as an innocent victim, right? The animal didn't sin, <laughs> right. um, an innocent victim who is now dying in my place so that I might be reconciled to God, right? That, that's the pic picture there. That's the image there. Uh, but of course, Hebrews tells us that the blood of bulls and goats can never actually never. take away sin. Um, so those were something of a placeholder. Yeah. Right. Those sacrifices were pointing forward to something greater. Uh, we also know, like the the Day of Atonement, uh, once a year, when the high priest would take the blood of the sacrifice into the holy of holies, right, the place where God dwelt in the tabernacle. Um, that sacrifice never perfected anyone. Right. If it had. Uh, it wouldn't need to be offered every year. And if it had, it would make uh, Christ's death on the cross um, unnecessary. unnecessary. Right, exactly. Um, and, that, and that's what Hebrews points out, is that, you know, if the sacrifices had perfected those for whom they were made, yeah. well, eventually they would have stopped being offered. You know, because the people having, be having once yeah. been perfected would no longer need another sacrifice the next year. Um, so through types and shadows, God was revealing... Um, how sin must be dealt with. Uh, he was foreshadowing his plan and what he was going to do. Um, so by the time we get to the New Testament, we now have the fullness of time. God is bringing about what he has promised, what he has foreshadowed uh, through the Old Covenant, uh, through these types and shadows of the animal sacrifices and everything. So um, that being said, <clears throat> essentially the whole Old Testament points forward to Christ. Yes, absolutely. And, and Jesus says that too, right? He's talking to the Jews in John 5, and he says, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, but it is they that testify about me. Right. Right. Jesus actually condemns the Jews for not listening to him uh, because the Jews were claiming to be followers of Moses. Right. And, and right. he says, If you believed Moses, you would believe me, right? For he wrote of me, <laughs> right? Jesus himself says, Moses was writing about me. Go check that out in John chapter five. Um, it's at the end of the chapter. And so that, that's powerful, right? So according to Jesus, the Old Testament is about him. Yes. Right. Luke 24, so Jesus summarizes the whole story as the son of man needed to uh, be betrayed into the hands of sinners, uh, die uh, and rise again on the third day. And that's a very fascinating summary of the Old Testament because you don't find those words, you know, you don't get that description. You, you can rack, the, your, you know, search through the Old Testament. You won't find that paragraph anywhere. Right. Uh, and yet Jesus summarizes the whole story and says, you know, thus it is written uh, that the Son of Man must be crucified, uh, raised again on the third day. It's like, that's Jesus' summary of, of what's happening in the Old Testament. Uh, right, and he's, he's looking at the types and shadows, exactly. the, the sacrificial system, the Isaiah prophecies, the, yes. all the different things that kind of point and just always point to that cross right. and to him. Right. So, so that's that's what God is doing. So in order to understand what Jesus what did for us, I, I think it's vital that we understand the Old Testament background, right? Because God, you know, all, all of the categories to understand what Jesus did come to us from the Old Testament. Right. Jesus made atonement. Well, great. What's atonement? Yeah. And don't and don't use Leviticus. <laughs> yeah. Define atonement. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> right. Um, so so here's what happened. So uh, Jesus is the second Adam. The Bible refers to him as the second Adam. Um, so as we're talking about a covenant head being one who represents others, well, just as Adam was our representative and he failed and therefore brought all those that he represented into sin, Jesus does the opposite for all those that he represents. Okay, um, who does he represent? Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so here's, here's Romans 5. Um, he's contrasting Adam and Christ. Uh, Romans 5, 15, But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through the one trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, uh, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. He, he wraps it up here. 
Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, right? One man's sin, Adam's sin, led to condemnation. We are under the sentence of death for all men. So also, one man's, uh, one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. So you catch that contrast, right? Just as Adam failed uh, and sinned, and through him all of his offspring became sinners, so also Christ did not sin, right? Lived the perfect life that we are required to live, the life of obedience to God's law, uh, Christ died in the place of his people, paying the penalty due to them for sin, uh, and rose again to life. So uh, as we talk about this, we need to understand Christ did this on behalf of those he was representing. Right. I just want to point out here, too, that it wasn't a, a point of weakness for Christ to go to the cross. He didn't, he wasn't captured and, and slain. Right. He gave himself up. On the cross. Right, so here's that point about the, is the cross divine child abuse? Um, as if Christ is an unwilling victim right. who is forced into this by his angry father who wants to give him as a sacrifice. And Jesus himself says, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Right. Uh, I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it up again. Um, and so, you know, that accusation of divine child abuse is used to try to undermine or, or attack what I think is the core of what happened at the cross. Right. Well, a lot of people will point out, oh, well, your God or your Savior was a weakling. He was taken by Romans and killed. Right. But by no means. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what Jesus says to Pilate, like, I could call, I could ask my father, and he would immediately send legions of angels right. to be at my disposal who would come and destroy the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, Jesus gave himself willingly. Yes. Right. This was... was uh, not without stress either. I mean, no. let this cup be taken from me. What's in the cup? Exactly. So that, that's what I want to get to here now. <laughs> um, so here's here's Romans chapter 3, uh, as it talks about what what did Christ actually do. So firstly, our condition. Uh, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right? So we are all sinners in our father Adam, uh, for first by nature, and then we are all sinners by choice. <laughs> right? We... we sin in accordance with our nature. Uh, we have all broken God's law. Uh, nobody is righteous. No, not one is what it says right before here. Um, so we all sin and fall short of the glory of God uh, and are justified. We are, we are all going to be freely justified uh, if we will come to Christ. So uh, are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. Okay, yeah, that's a big word. There's yes. going to be at least three people who don't know what propitiation at is. At least three, probably. Oh, at least three. Maybe more. Could be eight. Yeah. And that's great. <laughs> that's great because that's the word I wanted to count out on. Um, so propitiation is the, if, if you would just Google it, you'll get, it is the satisfaction of divine wrath. Right? So you, you can see the, uh, the ancient pagans were trying to propitiate their gods by chucking virgins into volcanoes. Right. right that. And that seems to <laughs> never work. No. You always needed more virgins. More yeah. virgins. More yeah. virgins. Uh, like, so that concept of, of satisfying wrath is what propitiation is. And actually, the, the Greek word that's used there is hilasterion, uh, which is a, a covering. And it's actually a reference back to the mercy seat. Now, what is the mercy seat? You, you sat through that's, my Exodus. Like, that is the lid. The lid <laughs> on the Ark of the Covenant. Where the uh, two cherubims yes. come together. Yes, so the Ark of the Covenant was the, uh, my children's Bible called it the Holy Box of God. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was this golden box that was made uh, in which were placed the Ten Commandments. The two tablets. Yeah, yeah. the tablets of the Ten Commandments, uh, the jar of manna, Aaron's staff that budded. Um, and it was placed into the most holy place in the tabernacle. And once a year, on the Day of Atonement, the high priest entered into the most holy place uh, and offered uh, the blood of the sacrifice that he would then sprinkle onto the mercy seat. Uh, and that made propitiation, right? That made, that was a covering for the sins. He, he did that uh, as a sacrifice on behalf of the sins of the people. 
Right, right. So here's where it's so important that we have that Old Testament background in order to understand what's actually going on at the cross uh, and in the New Testament as a whole. Um, so Paul points to that, right? The high priest going and sprinkling the blood of the sacrifice onto the mercy seat and says, there, that's what Christ did. That's what Christ did. And that is how we can have uh, a right standing before God, right? So we are, we are justified by God's grace as a gift. Uh, to be justified means to be declared righteous, right? So God counts us as righteous in his sight. Right. right. So that's where we are. We are, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but we are declared righteous freely by, by his grace as a gift. Right. So not something you can earn, not something you can do for yourself, uh, but by his grace uh, as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. Right. So Jesus Christ uh, fulfilled what all of those sacrifices were pointing to. So every year as the high priest had to go into the tabernacle and offer that blood onto the mercy seat to make atonement for the sins of the people, that was all pointing forward to what God was going to do in Christ um, as he made propitiation. Uh, he is the sacrifice that takes away wrath. Uh, right. he, he endured God's wrath on behalf of his people offering himself in our place, uh, just as the Old Testament sacrifices uh, did for the people of Israel. Um, so at the cross, uh, there's there's a couple texts you can look at here. 2 Corinthians 5, um, 21. It says that for our sake, he became sin who knew no sin. Right. So Jesus Christ did not sin, uh, but it says he became sin for our sake. That is, God put our sins onto Christ. Right. Um, think of Isaiah 53 is a, is a really good one there where it says, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, upon him was the, the, I can never say this word, chastisement yes. that brought us peace. Uh, the and, and the unique thing about the Isaiah chapter is it's four, five hundred, six hundred years before Christ. Right, yeah, way, way before. Uh, so here's Isaiah 53 verse 5. Uh, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Um, in this chapter, it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Uh, upon him is the iniquity of us all. He bore the sin of many. Right? You get all of this language of substitution. He was there dying in our place. So when Christians say that uh, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we are saying he is like that sacrificial lamb uh, slaughtered for the sins of the people. Right? He takes the penalty we deserved. Right? Right? That's what the cross is all about. Uh, Jesus making propitiation for the sins of his people. Uh, he is the mercy seat. He is... Uh, the offering. He is the blood sprinkled upon there. He did that for us. Okay, now let's define who us is. Right. Well, now here's this question, right? So we are all by nature in Adam. Uh, everybody, by virtue of their birth, uh, has Adam as team captain. Right. right? We, we are all on team Adam. Right. And <clears throat> whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. Right. So we are, we are by nature, by birth, uh, on team Adam. Um, everybody, every human being is a fallen uh, sinner uh, in union with Adam. Uh, that happens by birth. Um, now, how do you get transferred from Adam's team <laughs> to Christ's team, so to speak? Right. So if Adam is your federal head, if, Adam, if you die in Adam, uh, you will receive all that Adam can accomplish for you. Right. Which is a just reward of... Yeah, eternal damnation. Right. It, it is the curse. It is the penalty. It is death. Yeah. Um, but if you die in Christ, well, then you receive all that he accomplished. Right? Um, so uh, we are received into Christ by faith alone. Right? Uh, we talked about this with uh, Pastor Eric uh, a week yes. or two ago. Um, the solas, the, yeah, the five solas, is by, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Um, there is no work that we can do 
uh, to earn our way into union with Christ, uh, but it is entirely by faith. And then we saw that in the Romans passage that we read <laughs> earlier. Um, we are justified, we are declared righteous before God uh, by his grace, right? so grace is unmerited favor, as a gift, something freely given, not something earned, uh, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, you know, so through what Jesus accomplished, uh, whom God put forward, here's what he did, as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. By faith. Um, and so this is the good news that we proclaim to everyone. Um, whoever will, absolutely anyone, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you've done, but if you will turn in repentance and faith to Jesus Christ, uh, God will unite you to Christ. Right? So, do you have to become a Jew? <laughs> like, he died, for, he, he, he was a Jew who died for the Jews right. in Israel at that time. Is there somewhere where the rest of us get included? Yeah, well, that's part of the, uh, it, part of what was happening in Christ, is that um, Israel, even, even originally, Israel was told to be a kingdom of priests. Right. Well, what does a priest do? A priest is a mediator, uh, a, a go-between. Uh, they were actually called to mediate God's blessings to the nations. Um, so even Israel as well had uh, what was not meant to be inward focused. Right. They were supposed to be go out and, and spread the word. Yeah. Representatives of God to the nations. Um, and we see all throughout the Old Testament uh, prophecies that uh, the servant, the Messiah that God was going to send, would also be a light to the Gentiles. Um, and we see that happen throughout Jesus' ministry already. There's a few hints mm -hmm. of, of Gentiles being included. Um, and then it's Jesus makes it explicit. Uh, he says, uh, when I am raised up, I will draw all men to myself. Right. So in, in that context there, there were Greeks that had been seeking to talk to him, and he wasn't ready or willing at that time in his earthly ministry to talk to them. But he says, you know, when I am raised up, you know, on the cross, died, risen again, I will draw all men to myself. All nations will come. Um, and so in the Great Commission, uh, Jesus sends out his disciples and says, you know, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, right? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Okay, so that all nations means more than just Israel. Yes, yes. Go disciple the nations. Like, bring them in. Uh, you know, this is my inheritance. Even Psalm 2 uh, um, it's a messianic psalm. Uh, the Father speaking to the Son, Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, the ends of the earth your possession. Um, and so that's basically what Christ came to get for himself, uh, was the nations. And so he sends out his disciples and says, Go bring me my inheritance. Right? I, I made these people for myself. I have now died to purchase them. Go get them. Bring them in. Uh, and so whoever you are, Jewish, non-Jewish, Jewish, Gentile, whomever, um, by faith alone in Christ alone, uh, you are united to Christ and justified, uh, declared righteous before God. Um, and so get this concept of representation. Uh, just as what Adam did carries over for all those who are in him, so also what Christ did carries over and gets applied to all those who are in him, right? So through faith in Christ, through our union with Christ, uh, his perfect life of obedience to God's law gets counted to those that are in him, right? Just as Adam's sin got counted to those who are in him, right? Death spread yeah. to all men because of all sin. Uh, so also Christ's obedience to God's law is counted to those who are in him. Uh, that's his active obedience. Uh, secondarily, uh, Christ's passive obedience, right, his death in our place, the propitiation he made for sin, uh, is counted to those who are in him. This would be a really great spot for uh, Romans 8.23? Romans 8.23. 8.23. No, 6.23. 6, 6.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. 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 Um, right, so uh, his... Through our union with Christ, his perfect life is counted as our perfect life. His death for sin is counted as our death for sin. Uh, his resurrection becomes the guarantee of our resurrection. 
right? So if you are united to Christ, then what he did counts to you, uh, just as what Adam did counted to all those who are in him, yeah. right? So there's that the answer to that question of what does the death of a Jewish man 2,000 years ago have to do with us now? Um, and it's all this uh, answered by this concept of representation, understanding how God deals with humanity. Um, and so we proclaim uh, every Lord's Day, you know, Easter, people say, is the, the time where we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection, but... Um, <laughs> Well, really, that's what every Lord's Day is about. Right. Uh, we, why do we meet on the first day of the week? Well, that's the day that Jesus rose from the dead. <laughs> um, yeah. And so we proclaim the good news that uh, anybody at all who will turn from their sin and turn to Christ in repentance and faith will be saved. Uh, he is a powerful Savior. Uh, his death is sufficient to cover over any sin. Yes. Right. And so... That is the good news that we proclaim, that you can be made right with God through the finished work of Jesus, if you will simply but repent and believe. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, so Easter season is uh, it's an incredibly important season to Christians. However, it is not one of the commanded um, feasts or holidays that right. as Christians we need to adhere to. Yeah. As a church, we believe that the one and only is... Yeah, the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day. Yeah. So, so yeah, same same thing as uh, did we talk about Christmas? Oh, we did. We did talk about Christmas a bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, we we believe we we are free to have, take a season where we place special emphasis on the death and resurrection of Christ. Uh, we are free. We had a Good Friday service. Yeah. We believe we are free to gather for worship on well any time that we would want to, um, so long as we do observe the Lord's Day as as He has commanded. Um, and yes, so we, we do take that that season, um, and you know people are talking about the gospel, so it's a, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, to you can't go wrong when you're talking about the gospel. Yeah, as long as you're talking right. Look. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks again for uh, for another great show, and we will see you guys uh, next week where we're going to talk about a little bit more about Easter if I'm not wrong. Yeah, we'll I get, think that's we'll get into the resurrection a little more. Yeah, right on. See you next week then. <laughs>